Excellent. Hey guys, and welcome back to CES 2017 coverage here from Las Vegas, Nevada. This, I believe, is my last video covering this event. So if you've enjoyed my coverage so far, hit the thumbs up button, thumbs up button, let me know, because uh, it's, it's been a long week. We've got a lot done, but uh, it's been good times with good friends and good people like, like Steve here. He's been joining us. Uh, Steve is playing on the Doom demo going on behind me, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to start off by thanking my sponsors. Gigabyte, Deep Cool, as well as OCZ, a Toshiba company. Thanks to you guys for sponsoring my CES 2017 coverage. And if you guys are watching and want to say thanks to them, click their links down in the video's description below. Now, since we're at AMD, we of course are going to talk about two things. Zen, now known as Ryzen, if you're looking at the chips that's actually going to be sold to people, and Vega. And start, let's start with Vega, why don't we, since uh, they're actually showing off this demo finally. What Steve is doing is playing Doom in 4K. It's running on the Vulkan API, and he's doing so with a Ryzen CPU, the 8-core 16-thread chip that they've already been talking about and teasing and showing some performance of, and a Vega graphics card. So based on the Vega architecture, we know nothing beyond that as far as additional specs. There is some information that has just recently launched uh, about Vega, and um, it's really a little bit too much for me to dive into for this type of video, but let's just say there's a lot of excitement around it, uh, but we, don't, we still don't know when it's gonna come out. Um, but we at least know that it works. This system is like completely enclosed and taped off. There's a little bit of fan intake at the front, but um, as a result, they have the fan on the actual GPU in there running at 100% but it's managing to hit 60 to 70, sometimes upwards of 70 frames per second at 4K. Uh, and that's pretty insane, because Doom is a challenging game to run, even if you're using the Vulkan API. And it's good to know that we already have live demos of Vega achieving this type of performance in this type of game. So it's gonna be an excellent successor to Polaris, we already know, but more information hopefully will be coming out soon from AMD, like pricing and availability, and when it's gonna come out, and what types of chips are based on it and stuff. But uh, let's move on because uh, we have more Ryzen stuff too. We actually have AM4 motherboards. Look guys, actual AM4 motherboards. Um, I believe these are going to be close to the finished product, but there might still be some changes going on. And I'm starting off over on this window because these are motherboards that uh, are maybe from vendors that are a little bit less common or maybe you haven't heard quite as much from before. Uh, Biostar you've probably heard of. Uh, they're around in the US, although not quite as well known as say MSI or ASUS or Gigabytes, but uh, they have a couple boards here. They look like they're going with a the racing theme, um, but you can see some of the information about AM4 just by looking at it. Of course, the socket itself right up there, and what we now know uh, about the AM4 socket it is you are gonna need uh, to potentially upgrade your CPU cooler if you go for this, if you wanna try to use one of, one of your older coolers. Now the good news is if you're using one of the typical AMD coolers that uses the latches or the little clips uh, the catches that are on the top and bottom there, you can still reuse that. So the stock ones will still work. The difference is the bolts where they go through the board on the top and the bottom are now a little bit wider. So if you have a CPU cooler that requires a back plate, you're going to need to uh, basically update the mounting solution. So some CPU cooler vendors are actually updating their existing CPU coolers. And some of them, uh, like we already know Noctua, will just like send you out a new bracket for yours, um, which is cool. So. Uh, good guy knocked to uh, giving you an upgrade for your CPU cooler and you don't need to buy a completely new one. Uh, of course, if you have something like a Wraith, you can just drop it right in there. Here's another one from uh, uh, Biostar. This is a B350 GT3. Uh, the one we were looking up up here is, I believe, an X370 chipset, although I've completely lost track of where the title is. Who cares? We'll move on. Anyway, uh, down here we have this one, which I do know is an X370. This is the Biostar X370 GT7. And what you're going to see on these motherboards is like new and modern features with support for things like M.2. Uh, we've seen some U.2 slots on some of these as well. Um, the information on the Ryzen chip itself, uh, we already know, of course, it's 8 core, 16 thread. It's going to have a 3.4 gigahertz base clock and a turbo boost that we are still not sure of. They're not letting us know exactly. But it's going to have that uh, extreme automatic overclocking uh, thing. I forget the name of it right off the, the bat, but it's part of the Sense MI suite. And uh, it will automatically overclock your CPU based on what the temperature is that it's running at. So it will detect if you upgrade uh, your cooler, for example, 
and then just automatically juice up the clock speed and make it a little bit faster. Uh, this motherboard is a MSB350FX Gaming Pro. It's made by a company called Maxun, which I believe is located in China, and I don't think they distribute to the US, which is probably why I've never heard, the, heard of them before. Uh, and then finally down here we have another motherboard, really of indeterminate origin. Although again, I think this is, uh, from, this is from China because there are some Chinese characters down there. Over here we have ASRock. ASRock you've heard of, of course. They are, uh, they're a great company. They make lots of cool stuff, including this one, which has a big Intel logo on it right there for Intel's Gigabit Ethernet, which I thought was kind of funny. It's like, it's not an Intel board, it's an AMD board. It's AM4. Yeah, yeah they got Intel Gigabit, gig, Gigabit Ethernet, but this is the X370 Tai Chi. Uh, keep it with the same sort of design, aesthetic, black and white look as their existing Tai Chi boards uh, with the kind of cool uh, imprinted design there. On, on, the, on the motherboard itself. I like it. Now you, you'll probably notice that all of these motherboards, uh, well, they have DIMM slots, of course, but they do support dual channel DDR4 memory. That's also been confirmed for Ryzen. Uh, and then there's gonna be a ton of options when it comes to the chipsets. So here's another ASRock board. This is an A320M Pro 4. Uh, yet another example of some of the chipsets that are av available for Ryzen. A320 is gonna be slightly lower end and will not enable overclocking. All of the Ryzen CPUs will be overclocking enabled, but they'll kind of differentiate how much you can or should overclock based on the chipset that's going in there. So the B350 will be an overclocking chipset. The X370 will be an overclocking chipset. Uh, the lower end ones like A320 will not allow overclocking. So um, depending on whether or not you want to overclock or how much you want to spend on your, spend on your motherboard will significantly change uh, which chips that you want to go for. Now, another cool thing that I like about a lot of these boards is M.2 everywhere. Like, uh, look at look at that big long M. That's like, what is that, 80? I think that's M.2 80, 80, 2280, 22110. I forget what the longest one is there, but that's really long. Uh, this is, again, another ASRock. Oh, this is, the this is the Fatality motherboard. Shout out to Jonathan Fatality Wendell. Um, and then, of course, you'll notice a lot of the same design elements that you might be familiar with with existing motherboards, you know, chipset VRMs, all that good stuff. But um, USB 3.1's uh, Gen 2 support is, is very nice to have as well. And here's the X370 Professional Gaming, which is also part of the ASRock Fatality line. Black and red aesthetic overall. This one looks like it's got a bit beefier heat sinks on there. Uh, and just, just, to, just so you guys know, still using the same 24-pin main motherboard power connector. They're, they're not changing that, thank God. Hey, look, it's a Gigabyte AM4 motherboard. You know what was funny? It was when we went to Gigabyte at the beginning of the week, they said they had no idea anything about AM4 Gigabyte motherboards, but apparently they were liars. But I forgive them, because they sponsored my CES 2017 coverage. Everyone go click on the Gigabyte link in the video's description. All right, this is the, uh, what, what is this called? The uh, GAAB350 Gaming 3. I'm going to shorten that to B350 Gaming 3 just to be more simple. So Gaming 3 means this would be a little bit more on the budget side. B350 would mean that you would still have overclocking support though, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and then it looks like they're continuing the trend of having uh, LEDs everywhere. There looks like there's an LED strip up the right side of the board. Uh, some other design elements like, uh, there is an M.2 in there. You got your M.2. Uh, and then I don't know. I can't think of anything else, else compelling to say about this board. There's lots of other boards to talk about though, so let's continue on. Here's another A320 board, the A320M HD2. This one's in a micro ATX form factor. So again, you're not going to be able to overclock with this one. Uh, the lower end chipsets uh, provide functionality for uh, like Windows Secure Boot, and then the higher end chipsets uh, like B350 and uh, 370X provide additional connectivity, so you'll get additional USB. Uh, additional SATA support, sometimes uh, uh, SATA Express, or thank God you can take SATA Express and just use it as uh, multi general purpose uh, PCI Express Gen 3 connections. Here's an Oris board, got uh, some white shrouds there on the uh, chipset heatsink, as well as the I.O. and whatnot. Uh, we, again, LEDs, got the LED strips going up there, uh, but Looks like some pretty high-end features on this one. Uh, USB 3 front panel headers. I don't see the USB 3.1 front panel connector on there, but I don't think Gigabyte has integrated, integrated that onto too many boards. Uh, this does have like an LED uh, post indicator and uh, the steel guard on uh, some of the PCI Express slots. Uh, cool looking board though overall. And then I think this one is, uh, is the nicest looking one in my personal opinion. Uh, this is also an X370 board. This is also from the Aorus line from Gigabyte, so it's going to be a higher end 
Uh, X370 Gaming K5 on this one. I like the all blacked out look. I imagine this has RGB LEDs, although um, detailed specs on these boards really aren't, aren't existing yet. Uh, we're just kind of looking at what we can see, what's available and what's been confirmed by AMD as far as what the chips, uh, the chipsets are capable of. Um, but since the chipsets are capable of lots of different things and can be implemented in different ways, uh, basically, the motherboard manufacturers have a lot of different options. They can sort of integrate uh, the different features however they want and uh, give you, you know, the, the best board for uh, whatever purpose they're building it for, or price point, or that kind of thing. Here's an A320, A320M Pro VD. This one looks a little bit smaller, maybe again a little bit more on the budget side, only two dim slots. Uh, another thing you might notice, conveniently, conveniently so from this mother, MSI motherboard that has fallen off of its uh, spot is that a lot of these have video outs. Now it has also been confirmed that the Ryzen chip will not have an integrated GPU, but there are APUs that are compatible um, with FM4 that will be slotting into this. And I am told that there will be seventh gen APUs, the ones that exist right now, that will be reconfigured to slot into um, AM4. And then later in the year, we'll actually get the uh, Zen-based APUs, and those are going to come out uh, for desktops as well as for laptops, because that's really going to be their push on the laptop side, is the APUs with the integrated graphics. Uh, and I'm sure there's going to be lots of exciting stuff about that, but we're probably not going to hear about that till the second half of 2015. Anyway, this is a B350 Tomahawk. I actually showed this a little bit in my video covering MSI, so uh, check that out for a little bit better view of that one. And then here's a B B350M mortar. Again, uh, one of the boards that uh, we saw over at the MSI booth. And then finally, the X370 X Power Gaming Titanium. Just, just looking, looking real pretty there. I think it looks pretty. You know what else is pretty? Friends having a conversation. It's like Scott and Kyle back there, which I can't seem to focus on. Now, before I leave you guys, uh, I wanted to show you a quick montage of really awesome system builds. That's something that I really enjoy doing at trade shows because you get really cool systems that you don't often see and they're, you know, they're lit up and all that good stuff. So uh, one of the things that AMD has done with Ryzen is uh, they wanted to show off just how enthusiastic a lot of the system integrators are, whether they're big system integrators or small system integrators. Uh, they all want to build uh, some Ryzen systems for you guys. So the wall back there has a complete line of system integrators, a lot of small ones too, which I thought was pretty cool. Some boutique, boutique builders who have built ready to go Ryzen systems that you can just purchase straight up if you don't want to build your own. So uh, here's a quick look at those. Uh, but of course, thank you guys so much for watching my coverage of CES 2017. I really uh, appreciate it. I've had a great time this week. Uh, thanks to anyone who has come up and said hello. There have been quite a few people who have introduced themselves. Uh, you're all awesome and super friendly and you're great. Also big thanks to Kyle working the camera back there. Uh, we've been touring around and he's been doing a great job. Shout out to my editor as well, Joe. You're doing a great job, Joe. Thanks for editing all of my videos for this week. Uh, that's all for my coverage of CES 2017 though. Big thanks again to my sponsors, Gigabyte Deep Cool as well as OCZ. And uh, thanks for watching guys. Big thumbs up on the video down below, comments, uh, and let me know what you think about these uh, new Ryzen boards as well as uh, all of the teases about Vega, which we're super, super excited about. Uh, and here's some epic system builds to end my CES coverage 2017. We'll see you again soon.
and then just keep it rolling.